Hello, my friends of Tri-Cities Community Television. Welcome to our program. And today we are focusing in our candidates, especially Coquitlan and Tri-Cities area. Our guest is Steve Kim. Thank you for being here with us. And I know you because you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And yes. I've been participating with them and I'm an ambassador with them. Steve, why are you running for city councilor? And I know you've been uh, serving our city for three years already. Yes. Well, thank you, Judith, and it's uh, good to be here with you. And I also thank Tri-Cities uh, TV for having me, um, having me back, I should say, as well. Um, certainly, uh, you know, over the f past uh, little while, um, it's been a very, uh, I guess, important thing for me to serve our community. Uh, I was raised here, uh, our family moved here in 1981. Um, and this is my home, and I'm a proud um, Coquitlam resident. So uh, my experience in volunteering led me to seek office, and uh, there's no uh, better situation uh, to represent uh, the city in which I uh, raised you. Um, and I believe my, my balanced approach uh, and a collaborative style uh, can lend itself well at the council table. And we have so much going for our city our communities, um, and I want to uh, ensure that we're all working together so that the rising tide really does lift all boats. Um, and, you know, I look back over the last uh, uh, few years on my first term, uh, I'm very proud of my record. I've supported our affordable housing strategy, our environmental sustainability plan, um, our economic development strategy, and our child care strategy as well. And I completely support our efforts for reconciliation, in addition to equity, diversity, and inclusion as well. So, um, it's, it, it's been a tremendous uh, four years. Interesting that you mentioned all that programs. If people wanted to know more about you, what do you accomplished in these three years, and you mentioned that programs, what will be the, the three things that you say, I am being achieving in these years of service, mm -hmm. these three things yes, for well, my city? Yeah, and that's a good question, and certainly affordable housing. Um, uh, and that means so many different things, but first and foremost, it's about creating more uh, housing options for residents. Um, I'm, we have 10,000, over 10,000 purpose-built rentals happening in our city right now in stream. And of those, 2,000 of them are non-market, below market. Uh, those are 2,000 homes that will go to people who need desperately to find uh, a home for themselves. Uh, not only Coquitlam, but it's a regional concern. Um, but with this growth, especially around our SkyTrain stations, this is providing opportunities to create new business opportunities to get people out of their cars, but also um, get more into active transportation. So we are able to create all these hubs around SkyTrain stations so that people aren't, and this is something that happened to me, I'm not commuting to downtown Vancouver anymore um, or taking the train. So I'm, I'm saving what I believe, which is also very important, is time. Um, and those hours, two hours of taking a train or driving um, has really off afforded me, uh, a, a, I believe, uh, 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 affordability levels I didn't really have when I was living elsewhere or doing that commute. Um, so uh, affordability and affordable living is a, is a key concern. Uh, certainly, we're, we're experiencing what I believe over the last few years, uh, we're seeing the the, the transformation to go into active transportation and green technologies. Um, I'm very proud of uh, the fact that we have uh, two things going, the, the establishment of our environmental sustainability plan, but also a focus on our uh, strategic transportation plan and green innovation. Um, we have reduced parking minimums at uh, developments near SkyTrain so that people can get out of their cars and we have a minimum of one uh, EV charging per parking spot for new developments. Um, and we recently, uh, the city of Coquitlam, uh, became part of a, a, a member of a, a group or I guess an initiative called Project Greenlight. And what that is, is to help entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs, uh, get into, uh, I guess, uh, a purchasing or a procurement process with the city or other 
uh, types of large organizations so that they have a ready market for some of the green technologies that they might be selling. Uh, so to me, I think that's also tr tremendous. Um, and there's no question uh, over the last little while, I believe the work I've supported on with the childcare strategy has also been important. Um, I think uh, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no doubt that uh, our families need uh, spaces for their children to go while they're working. Um, and I believe uh, that is also going to provide uh, some strong benefit uh, in the short, short term and in addition to the long term as well. With all the change that our city is having and the new uh, buildings and construction in, in this main area in Coquitlam, mm -hmm. what is your opinion and what, uh, what are you a favor of? What is the plan there with traffic? Lighting. You are really oriented into become a more green city, but mm -hmm. more developing, more people. Yes. Yeah. You what know, is the solution there? Well, you know, it, it's always, uh, you know, uh, it's, it can be challenging to ensure that all voices are heard in this. Um, but one thing for sure that I believe in is that with SkyTrain, with rapid transit, that we need to build some density around it. So I, I support our affordable housing strategy so that we can also get the right mix um, zoning around there um, so that people will get out of their cars. Um, and certainly I've supported our good neighbor policy so that during construction, um, the area residents, um, you know, the, 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 the developers have to ensure that it's minimal, um, I guess, uh, uh, impediments on the people who are still living there. And that includes traffic. Um, and when projects are completed, uh, the, the network that is produced, whether it's uh, um, additional roads or uh, new active transportation networks, um, this will allow, I believe, a stronger flow of people and goods. Um, so this higher density around SkyTrain really does serve a number of purposes. And what platform are you promoting for this new year? Like if you are reelected city council, what is the mm -hmm. platform that you will focus on? Like yes. Well, and thank you for asking. Uh, part of me, what I really believe in is also that we are such a, a diverse city, a multicultural city. And I really uh, am interested in seeing how we can create and uh, develop our c cultural hubs in our city. We have a rich history and heritage in our French community mm -hmm. in the Yardville. Uh, we have a, a, a growing Korean community along North Road. Uh, we have a, a growing Persian community um, and so on. So it's how do we create these opportunities? And that's not just for businesses, but also community groups. And also what I believe is also uh, needed um, are culturally, um, I guess, uh, appropriate or relevant seniors housing for uh, uh, newcomer uh, communities or whoever it might be uh, so that uh, everyone can really um, participate in our city. So you, you wanted to include seniors mm -hmm. and also to be able to promote more like activities for families or how do you want it to create that mm -hmm. multicultural unity in our city? Yeah, well, I think uh, a lot of it happens uh, at various levels. Certainly, when I was growing up, my, my parents didn't speak English too well. Um, so my brother and I uh, were going to school, um, you know, whether Meadowbrook, Charles Best, or Centennial. Um, and we were also somewhat like uh, uh, people uh, in the Korean community who were also interacting and bridging out. Um, creating mutual understanding. Um, and then I look to this day where, you know, for instance, with the Korean community, with all these uh, small businesses, um, it's a very welcoming environment uh, so that people can exchange uh, ideas, cuisine, um, and experiences with each other. Um, and ultimately, I would welcome uh, you know, a Korean cultural center uh, to uh, establish itself in Coquitlam, uh, a Korean seniors housing unit, or even Korean um, child care, uh, for instance. Um, but if that can happen for the Korean community, it can happen for every community. And I think uh, that is something that where, with these cultural hubs, um, it could really prove uh, to um, increase this bridge building um, and kind of intertwine it into the fabric of our, of our society here. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, why somebody 
needs to give you the vote? What will be the determinate point well, for us citizens of Coquitlam to choose you? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, certainly uh, I, I believe, um, you know, what I, what I bring to the table. Um, I've, uh, I, I bring a balanced approach. Um, I always know that my view or opinion, uh, there are one, two, three others out there, and I have to keep an open mind and listen. Um, I believe in collaboration and, as I said before, bridge building. Um, and I believe my experience uh, now as a first-term city councillor also lends itself uh, to, uh, I'm at a point where I, I believe I understand the processes of the city and I can really start to focus on um, uh, getting things done that, uh, and, and build consensus among, among my peers. Okay, so if you wanted to give a message to the families of Coquitlam or a recommendation, what that would be? Well, I would say uh, certainly to uh, continue to in engage in the democratic uh, process. Um, on October 15th, um, this is the time uh, to uh, get your or their voice heard. Um, this is the report card of council. Um, and if, uh, if uh, you're feeling good uh, and you continue to want to improve our, our city, um, and then there's a, a vote that I hope for myself, um, but uh, I really believe it now is the time to let your voice be heard um, and be engaged, um, get out to vote. Uh, four years ago, I believe it was about, I think, 26, 27 percent uh, voter turnout. Um, so I, I, I really hope um, that everyone takes some time to uh, read all and learn more about the candidates, learn more about what the city is doing, um, and cast their vote. Because um, I think uh, that is, first and foremost, uh, a key thing that families can do. We believe that information makes us strong. Mm -hmm. And as a community, it's really important that we participate. So to all of you, my friends and families uh, participating with Tri-Cities Community Television, we support your idea. Let's get active, make your voice uh, like sound, and help our community. So thank you, Steve, for being part of this program. Thank you. And welcome, um, hopefully, after this, you come and you say, yes, I accomplished that again yes. in this term. Steve, I wanted to ask you, especially because you're a president of Beanpoint a group, how that can benefit your role as a city councillor? Well, it's, it's, uh, I think this is an important question uh, to be asked. Uh, you know, for me, during my uh, first term, um, I put my business on the back burner. Um, my priority was to, first of all, learn how to be an effective city councillor. Um, and uh, being my business being on the communications and, and uh, marketing side of things, uh, client projects tend to require um, a lot of attention because uh, fires can happen and uh, you, as a service provider, you have to be able to be present and be able to, to provide solutions to your clients. Knowing that my priority was with uh, the city, um, I work to uh, minimize uh, what our business is doing. Um, so when I look at what it's afforded me, it's afforded me the ability, my experience of working with entrepreneurs and startups, um, that has what I have brought to the table. I'm, uh, I always have an entrepreneurial spirit um, and working extremely hard to get things done. Um, uh, it's, you know, I also look to my business when I was solely focused on my business, I also had, uh, I focused my attention in, in, I guess, in threes. My business was 30%. My time volunteering for the, my professional association, uh, uh, the BC AMA, which is a marketing association in the province. Um, I focused my time in helping on um, professional development and work networking. And also I spent 30% uh, in my role uh, as a, in the community uh, uh, for an organization called C3 Korean Canadian Society, where we have a, a camp for kids every summer, uh, in addition to a leadership conference for young professionals and university students uh, to provide mentorship for them. Things that I never had uh, in that sense uh, when I was at that age. Um, so to me, it was about uh, creating mutual understanding, bridging, um, and those experiences that I bring to, the, to, to my role at City Council. And your volunteer experience, Steve, 
what is something that uh, you learn from and it's something that you will maybe um, change in your role as a city councilor. So it's two questions on one. Yeah, well, uh, I'll first start off uh, like in my more recent volunteer experience. Um, when it is my time delivering meals for our seniors. Um, and I'm extremely proud of this one, uh, and it's one that I'll always uh, discuss and, and, uh, and uh, create awareness for this program. Uh, when uh, the pandemic started in 2020, um, our, a lot of our seniors were uh, not able... Isolated. To, they were isolated, and uh, the city, um, Dogwood, Glen Pine, in addition to uh, overall Parks and Rec, um, really stepped up to the table to create a program to cook meals and have them delivered to seniors across our city. Um, and this is something I've been a part of since uh, early April. April. Um, and uh, at that point in time, the delivery was twice a week. Uh, then um, as things progressed over two years, uh, it's gone now to once a week. Um, and this is something where, for me, I'm out and about uh, and really appreciate uh, uh, the volunteer community that we have here in Coquitlam, but also the dedication of the staff to, to make the meals and organize everything. And what I've learned from that is that community spirit is extremely strong. Um, it was an effort uh, to get things going so quickly and with high quality because these are meals. Yes. Right. And yes. Uh, the the feedback that I get on the doorstep there uh, is uh, incredible. And uh, not only just on the quality of the food, but also the engagement that uh, uh, the seniors are having with the volunteer drivers. Um, and so to me, that is just something I'm extremely proud about. So you were volunteering cooking or delivering the food? Delivering. Oh, okay. I was thinking that you were a great chef. Uh, Steve, what is the, and my question was also part of, what do you will change uh, if you had the opportunity to be reelected for the sprints that you have? Or what are the points that you will improve in this role? Well, um, certainly uh, I always look at myself and I'm always looking to improve. Uh, but also uh, I'm hearing, uh, I'm, I'm also you know, talking with a lot of residents right now. Uh, and certainly uh, we want to continue to ensure that uh, we are creating the right housing mix for our residents current and future um, and uh, see how we can also push uh, more supportive housing options uh, in our city um, and help people um, go from maybe it's a shelter but also have them a pathway uh, forward and I think that's also a very important uh, thing for uh, for the next term. I, I also believe and this is something that everyone's facing and uh, and I, I know everyone is um, also very concerned and I believe uh, mental health um, and how that plays a part uh, in a lot of things that we do um, and uh, certainly it's uh, given rise to some concerns on public safety um, and uh, I, I, I my aim is to ensure that we continue to live in a safe um, and livable um, community uh, across the city. Um, but uh, uh, there's no uh, question that uh, uh, I wish our 10,000 units, uh, for instance, uh, were, were, were uh, able to um, solve the region's uh, uh, housing uh, concerns, um, but there's a, still a lot more work that we need to do. When you mention mental health, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Like, what will be the project to work on it? That you are creating a center. We had shared in our community and other, mm -hmm. other centers that they're providing some support, but are you planning to create more programs? Or well, what, is, what is in place for that? Well, you know, certainly it's uh, also understanding where, uh, you know, it, certainly there are a lot of, when you th people think of health, automatically people think of the province. Um, and there are things that we can do at the city level to advocate for. Um, one of them, um, for instance, uh, I know the mayor is a, a big advocate for this and it's the CAR 67 program. So that when uh, a wellness uh, check happens or other type of uh, situation occurs, uh, that there could be a health professional accompanying uh, the uniformed uh, uh, officer. Uh, and that might help to alleviate some, some, some initial tension that could happen just when, um, uh, when uh, during those uh, situations. First responder, right? first call yeah. somebody so, that had mental health experience. Yeah. Yes. 
can assist our policemen. Yes. That is really good. Right. And this is uh, certainly something that uh, uh, our city, our council is uh, uh, certainly uh, acutely aware of and, and pushing for. Um, and, and certainly uh, looking to um, you know, find ways to support uh, even uh, ECOM uh, and our, our the ambulances uh, and uh, see what at the city level we can do to advocate for. Um, but uh, I think it's also important that uh, our community members, our, our city staff, um, and we, we have to face it, uh, it's been a pretty traumatic uh, two and a half years. And uh, um, this, the result of this, uh, we still don't really know uh, how it's gonna, what the outcomes will really be. And so I think we have to be proactive on, on some areas of understanding. Um, full personal wellness is also community wellness. In a personal level, Steve Kim, what do you like the people to know about you? Well, um, thank you for the question. Um, I guess uh, that uh, certainly um, I have many hobbies. Uh, you know, growing up uh, at school, uh, you know, I, I played baseball, um, in Coquitlam Minor uh, League. Uh, I also uh, played tennis, uh, and uh, golf was our family sport. Um, I also played a lot of volleyball over my years, um, but uh, um, recently, I have to say, I, I've started running. Um, this is very recent, um, but uh, it's uh, really something that has uh, kind of changed my life. Uh, so I'm really hoping it, uh, I can continue this. Uh, I think um, uh, over the last little while, I guess uh, there was a little bit too much uh, uh, Netflix uh, in the evening, uh, you know, staying at home. Um, but uh, it's been really good to get out there, um, especially in the morning, uh, to run. Uh, so, you know, with Netflix, I'll add to the fact that I'm certainly a movie uh, buff uh, and like uh, various uh, uh, TV shows as well uh, that, uh, you know, that, uh, that's on these days. Um, and uh, certainly like to go for hikes and walks. Um, I try to do cooking when I can. Um, I, uh, I've focused a lot on um, trying to learn some of my mother's recipes in, uh, in Korean cuisine, uh, in addition to my father's as well. Um, and, uh, but no one can cook like my mom or dad, <laughs> especially my mom. What is the best uh, recipe that, that, that well, you remember from them? Yeah, well, the first the one that's kind of my comfort food is called kimchi jjigae, and it's uh, kimchi stew. Oh, good. Um, and even though uh, throughout the years uh, growing up, my mom would make it, but more recently, and when I mentioned my dad, my dad has started to really take up uh, uh, making it. So my recipe is kind of a, a hybrid of, of theirs. Um, so I certainly love uh, 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 f food and cuisine. My parents um, came from uh, the restaurant business and food store business. Uh, they opened the first Korean restaurant in Vancouver back oh, in the 70s. Oh, wow. So I grew up around food. And uh, so uh, uh, that's certainly a big part of my life. Do you still manage that business? Oh, no, they don't, uh, unfortunately. They're retired. Yeah, they are retired and happy grandparents. Uh, oh, good. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, certainly... Uh, um, currently, uh, uh, you know, they are just in, enjoying life and fortunately um, have been uh, uh, safe and healthy these days. It's so interesting that now you are enjoying to do running in the morning. Mm -hmm. As, and, and thank you for open and be um, like clear about your hobbies and what is your interest, your personal interest, cooking. Yes. So really good. Did you win? I hope that you implement some of the a marathon or run or like a walk in the beautiful area of Lafarge Lake and Coquitlam River. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, that would be interesting to have there uh, a really nice activity together, you know, for oh. parents and children. Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, my friends, thank you for being with us. I hope that you enjoyed this interview with our candidate, Steve Kim. And please be informed. Make your decision, participate for the goodness of your community is important for us and for your family. Thank you for being with us. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, thank you.